Thank you very much. Uh, it is a great honor to speak at the conference dedicated to Masaki Kashiwara. I have, since I was a student, I was exposed to his work and his influence in the, uh, indirectly while in Moscow. And I, I will talk about uh, two subjects which uh, where he contributed uh, on a fundamental way, which is first perverse sheaves, as Pierre said. And second subject is categorification. So, and uh, uh, the talk is based on joint work with Toby Dickerhoff. Vadim Schechtman and Jan Sodima. So both of these uh, concepts and subjects are by now, uh, by now classical. Let me just fix notation here. So if you have, we have, a, we have the category perf XS corresponding to a complex stratified space. So this is the category of certain constructible complexes F. And the conditions, let me write uh, the conditions in the most suggestive way that the ith cohomology of the sheaf has suppo is supported on co-dimension I. So the cohomology kind of dies, do dies down as we go further. Uh, and an example is, as Pierre said, is the complex of solutions of a D model, or home over D from N to O. So if you take this as an example of perverse shift, that this is exactly the normalization. So and the meaning that it is perverse means that, it, at least generically, the correspondence between models and shifts is exact. So whatever abstractions there are, they kind of sit on higher codimension. And this is a such a fundamental concept that appears in many areas of mathematics. And it seems that it, it uh, will appear also in many other areas. So, and uh, he, he, here the, 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 the second subject, uh, categorification, it, it, it is very prominent now in representation theory. It is a passage, so uh, saying briefly, it is a passage from vector spaces and re relations in those vector spaces of the form A equals B plus C to triangulated categories. So suppose vector spaces V and triangulated categories V, uh, uh, v script and it can be appeared as Grothendi group of the category, say tensor hour field, so vector spaces over a field, and the basic identity is lifted into uh, something like this, into an exact triangle, B, A, C. What's remarkable is that there are so many situations when algebraic structures for vector spaces are naturally lifted into data of triangulated categories in which the identities are lifted into triangles. So those structures, they basically ask Please categorify us. If you look at some point, your eyes are opening and you see that all the identities has to be lifted. And the theory of perverse sheaves seems to fit into this subject. So and let me d d discuss first of all the absolutely classical example of this and then uh, uh, our approach to extending this to a, a geometric theory of sheaf-like objects but of this, uh, of this type. So of course the classical example is perverse shifts on the disk. So we have a disk, the category of perverse shifts on the disks with one singularity at zero. And as well known, it is given by two, such a perverse shift can be described by two vector spaces and two, atom, uh, two maps, u and v, such that the transformations 1 minus uv and 1 minus vu, suppose this is, this is transformation for on psi, 
and this is transformation of phi, are inversible. In fact, the vector space is a finite dimensional that only one, if only one is invertible, then the other is invertible. This is kind of uh, a conceptual refinement of picard lefschetz theory. And th th this uh, categorifies to the concept of a spherical functor, and this was the starting point of our approach. And this is due to Anno and Logvinenko. So instead of two vector spaces, we have two triangulated categories, G0 and G1. Now when I say triangulated categories, I need to be more precise because in order to perform the constructions, we need to do enhancements. We need to, uh, l let me just write, say enhanced. And there are two ways of enhancing, by DG structures or by stable infinity categories as proposed by Luria. But and in fact, like more systematically, it, 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 it's actually better to use this formalism. But I try to not go into those detail so the details so much. Suppose we have a functor, f, so that there's a triangulated category, f an exact functor. And suppose it has an adjoint, f, or, uh, the, the right adjoint, then we have the adjunction maps. We have something like the identity of D0. Well, the natural transformation is that's called the unit of adjunction, I think, to uh, F star circle F. And the core unit is F composed F star to the identity of D1. And if we have sufficiently flexible formalism, then we can take the cone of those natural transformations of functors cone of this one and cone of this one and call this T1 and call this T0. So those are, again, self functors of those categories. And the functor is called spherical. I simplify just a little bit because in the correct definition, they also another adjoint appears. I simplify just a little bit to, to the comparison. So F is called spherical, called spherical. if T0, T1 are equivalences. So this uh, completely parallel to th th this algebraic identity and the adjointness condition means that we have the maps which sort of materialize those identities. So the goal of my talk would be to uh, kind of develop this idea to a more geometric theory. So here I, I must say that, again, everybody knows this very well, that this phi and psi are not canonically determined by the perverse sheaf. The, the, we need to choose certain data. So this depends on, depends on choices. So for instance, we should choose a direction, or we should choose a coordinate, or something like this. And, and in reality, those are local systems, not just vector spaces, but local systems on the parameter spaces of those choices. <coughs> so and, and my goal would be to say f f f things cleanly enough so that one can pass to the categorical analog. So the goal, goal is develop, develop a geometric geometric formalism <laughs> because this uh, sort of generalizes a particular way of describing perverse sheets, the quiver description. And <clears throat> so define uh, an analog of the global sections of a, of, of a categorical perverse sheet. So, and, uh, so, so which then would provide a, 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 as a sort of candidate for Foucault categories with coefficients, with coefficients. And this idea of introducing coefficients in Foucault categories was uh, suggested by Maxim as a categorification. So, so, so don't think. What am I writing here? As gamma as uh, a candidate 
for require category get coefficients so on this this was suggested by Consage. So why is it natural here? Because uh, Fukuya category is at the very rough level is categorification of homology. And if we sort of allow ourselves to switch between homology and cohomology, then cohomology can be with coefficients. So we can ask if there is something similar there. OK, so now uh, let me just stick on this board. Oh, there's a third one. OK, so what I will do in, in the next maybe five or 10 minutes, I will just pound on, the, on this example. This is a very, very classical example. However, since I said the concept of perverse sheaves is so, is so important, and there are many, many consequences, and even this classical example, if you look at it carefully and systematically, it reveals more than we expect. So th that's what I want to do. Uh, let me call it th this part perverse sheaves on, on a disk invariantly. Perverse on a disk invariantly. You may ask what, what is there left to say about this, but it seems that the subject is completely inexhaustible. So we can look at this for many for a, probably many years. So let's consider a part of the structure. Suppose we have just a map like this from C to phi. So this data, well, it can be it is just a linear operator. Or we can look at a two term complex. Now it is a classical construction of the Grotting school of algebraic geometry that with two two term complex we can associate the Picard category or Picard groupoid. I write it like this: psi to phi. phi. It's very common in the theory of stacks. So Picard, let's say Picard category. It's a category of which objects are uh, formed by elements of phi. So objects equals phi. And morphism home between two such objects. You add uh, all those uh, psi which maps map into the difference. Set of all those psi or which v of psi equals phi of say phi prime minus phi. Uh, this is <coughs> so say a, a, a Picard group point in the category of vector spaces. Now, if we write all, all morphisms, so let us let's more, all, more of this category, which is disjoint union, or phi phi prime, home, phi phi prime. So he, he, in, in doing this, we'll count some of them multiply. So every psi will enter several times. And it's clear how many times it will enter. This is going to be psi <coughs> plus phi. Now, it's a category, so let's form the nerve of this category. It's a simplicial object. In this case, it will be a simplicial vector space. Simplicial. I'll just call it n. So, and if you're, so the n set of n simplices of this, it would be, as again, everybody knows. S set of composable uh, arrows, and if you write it like this, it would be psi to the n plus phi. So this is a simplicial object. So there are map, there are face maps, d n n minus one, d del i, the de degenerations s i, satisfying well-known conditions. This is all very easy to write in terms of this map v. So now, uh, as a simplicial object, uh, this is a functor from simplicial simplex category delta uh, with the contravariant functor to the category of vector spaces. 
Now the, ca the category delta is embedded into uh, various categories appearing in cyclic homology. And this turns out to be relevant to the problem of perverse sheaves. So let me say include this category delta into what's known as a paracyclic category. It's a version of the cyclic category of Alan Cohn. Paracyclic category. So here there are phases in degeneration, and there is a new, there is a new. Uh, so, so let me just say that there are there are objects named by uh, labeled by natural numbers here. So new automorphism. Automorphism will be Tn from n to itself, which kind of rotates phases and degenerations around the circle. The co conjugation with it rotates. Let, let me just write rotating del i s i. So it's written in any book on cyclic homology. And the actual cyclic category uh, lambda is a cons is obtained by imposing the condition that Tn to the n plus 1 is identity. And here we don't impose this. So there is a bigger category which sort of involves cyclic symmetry of things, allowing us to moving them around. And I want to say, f f formulate the following proposition. That suppose we have this, which is a part of a data of a perverse sheaf, just, just one map V. For a given V, we, we have a bijection. So the following two things, the sets are in bijection. Between. First, uh, all the possible ways that uh, the maps in the other direction, which define a perverse sheaf, they do define a perverse sheaf, maps, maps uh, u from phi to psi, such that this diagram u v so corresponding to a per corresponds to a perverse sheaf, so perverse sheaf on a disk, and second. Ways of extending this simplicial structure to a bigger category, to, to the data of a simplicial vector space to a paracyclic vector space. So ways of extending, <coughs> extending. I'll just write n dot to a paracyclic. So in this situation, so in cons uh, category, we have Tn to the n plus 1 equals identity. Here, Tn to the n plus 1, for all n, they form a central system, is automorphism of the identity function. It's commute, they commute with everything. And this thing would correspond to the monodromy. Somehow correspond, so it, it combines all the monodromy. So the, the corollary of this is that the category of perverse sheaves on the disk is equivalent to the category of paracyclic vector spaces, which obtained as simplicial objects, they are nerves of something. So paracyclic vector. Spaces which are as simplicial ones are nerves of something. And this being nerve of something is a well known condition on uh, a simplicial set or simplicial vector space known as the Siegel condition. And it's convenient to sort of qualify it and say that this is one Siegel condition. So it's basically the data that the simplex is determined by its sort of outer skeleton. Ah, okay, here's only two of them. Okay, I see. I see. 
Okay, now th this can be understood a little more geometrically. And this is where the point of view of around spaces and around categories comes into play. So consider the circle. So the whole uh, somehow drift of the uh, cyclic homology is to work on the circle. So consider the circle as one. And let's consider the, let me call it the run poor set, partially ordered set of S1. It's a version of the a category of exit paths of the run space. So it's a set of post sets of disjoint union of arcs. So disjoint uh, A, which is disjoint union of closed arcs. With a natural inclusion. Including empty or not empty? Ah, not empty. Yeah, not, not empty, yeah. Not empty one. Yeah. Uh, so, so on this post set, it, it is a category. In, in particular, uh, the morphisms are embeddings. So there are morphisms which are homotopy equivalences, which sort of bijec so it's homotopy equivalences bijection of pi zero. So <coughs> and let's call a uh, run of S one. So this is this post set, and we invert weak equivalent homotopy equivalences. So in this, well, it is not difficult to prove, it's the same as, para, as the paracyclic category. It's finite, right? huh? finite. finite, 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 yes, non-empty non and finite, yes, 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 sorry, yeah. Yes, a paracyclic category, and this way it's sort of geometrically clear. So now, we can, if you have a perverse sheaf, we can geometrically produce a functor on this set. So we have, suppose we have, suppose we have uh, several arcs. So let's form a sort of cone of, over this set of arcs, some kind of propeller. So it's a K of A propeller. So if now we have F, a perverse sheaf, it's a functor, uh, which takes A into the first, hom uh, first homology, rel relative hyperhomology, that k, k support K of A of disk with coefficients in F. So in this case, only one, so, so this, uh, this is the only one non-trivial. So all the other hyperhomology will be zero. So this is also shows that with respect to f, it's an exact function. So in this one, this is how one can see that thing directly. So <coughs> in this description, we already don't use any choices at all, or we sort of take all of them simultaneously. OK, now I have to do something. So uh, when you say take a union of closed arms, so uh, you have, you have, I want to know uh, so, of course, you cannot take everything. Is it yes, yes, that's also not allowed. Yes, it should be, should be contractible. Yeah. You cannot take everything, you cannot take the empty set. Yes. But points are allowed. Closed points are, are allowed. Oh, points are allowed. It's, it's okay. It, it, it doesn't really matter. Yes. <coughs> yes, points are okay. Okay, so now <coughs> let me discuss the next part. will be still about perverse sheaves, but let's describe them invariantly on a, on a surface, on a topological surface. Again, invariant. So we have S an oriented surface, possibly with boundary. With boundary, okay. So something like this. 
and we have so a stratification would consist of finite set of points, interior points, and inside. That is stratification, and we have the category of perverse sheaves on the surface with possible singularities at this end. Uh, so want to get a description of this category in a sheaf theoretic way. want to describe, uh, so to say, perverse sheaves as sheaves. Of course, one can say, let's use the D-modal language, but this is harder to, uh, uh, it's not clear how to categorify it. So let's sort of pl play a game similar to this one, but allow, to move, allow ourselves to move the central point, the center of the propeller, a little bit uh, on the surface. So let me first, or, or rather let me make, make, make a definition. Let's call basic, instead of basic pairs of open sets. Open, opens. So it's a open set U inside U prime, inside an open set U prime, with the following property. Let me first make a picture. It would be a sort of curved version of this. So such that U is topologically a disk, or maybe we can say that the closure of U is a topologically closed disk. Uh, second, U, U prime is topologically disjoint union of disks, to find it, non-empty. And the claw, actually, U minus U prime is contractible. Let's call it K. So it will be this part, it's, 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 it's the curved analog of the propeller. And uh, and uh, it meets the sing singularities in at most one point. It may either meet or not meet. So this is a version of this picture, and in this case, uh, then this implies that no, uh, hypercohomology with coefficients no, uh, degree is not equal to one of u modulo u prime with coefficients in f is zero. And f it lies in per xn. So it's, it's, it's the same situation, except now it is a poset with respect to embeddings of pairs. Again, it's a poset. So the disks are open or open? Open, open, yeah. So, so, so this is an example. This is what we are allowed. So this is the disk, and those are topologically open disks. That's an example. Or maybe I'll do, I'll do it here. We can prove, if you want, it's a theorem, but it's really a proposition. On the same time, it's a clear description of perverse sheaves without any choices. And, and as such, it is appealing, pair of xn as equivalent to the category of contravariant functors. Let's call it E. From this poset, so let's, let, let's call this poset, let me call it run of xs. It's a version, kind of global version of the run category. run xm to vector spaces, satisfying uh, satisfy the, the, the following two conditions. First, homotopy invariance. So basically, if you have an embedding, uh, so when we have v, v prime embedded into u, u prime, such that, well, embedded in the obvious sense, such that v to u, oh, sorry, u is homotopy equivalent, uh, uh, v prime 
uh, v minus v prime to u minus u prime homotopy equivalent. And uh, the same, uh, uh, let me register v minus v prime intersected with n equals u minus u prime intersected with n. H homotopy equivalence, first condition. It's kind of clear that it would, ho for this function uh, uh, out there, it would hold. And second, the exactness. Let me do it probably. So I, I simply write the exact sequence of triple, but in the, in the case when all three terms are uh, admissible. So let me write it here and then explain. E of uh, u v intersect of u prime, E of u u prime, E of v v intersect of u prime, zero, zero is exact whenever all three, whenever all three triples <coughs> basic. So a, a good example of s such V would be, suppose v, v, this is U and this is U prime, this is U, this is U prime, and suppose we have V like this. Then if all three are admissible, then it would be like this. So and I should say that this is a kind of remindful uh, in, in the particular case of sheaves on a surface, uh, right here to the approach of McPherson to perverse sheaves to the via the concept of what he calls fairy functors. Except uh, his, his approach is more general and it's not precisely at the level of vector spaces. But it's a, it's a similar uh, sort of general uh, approach. So it, 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 Anyway, this is a com completely shift, shift theoretic description of this, of course, a very elementary category. In the second condition, you don't assume uh, condition the intersection with n. Oh, no, no, if all triple basic, so, so, so if all three pairs, so, so, sorry, suppose you have all three pairs are basic. So in the definition of rank category, you don't require that they're basic. I mean, rank category just gives. No, 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 no. So all, only basics. So, so, sorry, only basics. So the morphisms in the run category are in which direction the inclusion goes exactly for the morphism? No, it, it, so so we, we want, well, if we want this to be contravariant functors, so that's actually embedding like this. We, we, so we want this to be the functor. We, we want this to be the functor. F would associate this functor H1. Yeah, so then. What on the U and the U prime? Yes, yes, yes. Both of them. Well, well let's write U. Uh, u prime less or equal than v, v prime it means that u is contained in v and I think u prime is contained in v prime. Now, now in the homotopy invariance, you stated the condition of the complement. And then yes. for the complement, first of all, you don't have a, a, a map. Ah, uh, yes, yes. We, we need to say, uh, sorry, about, about v prime, yes. B b b but for the, f uh, f for the, but this condition we, we need anyway. This condition is important. So you, co the compl you don't have a map, a directly a map between V and V prime and U and U prime. Yes. Yeah, but if it's already sort of homotopy, homotopy invariant in the naive sense, then we have this map. So if V prime and U prime are homotopy invariant. Yes. Equivalent. If this is the homotopy equivalent, then you can, yes. by looking at it, get a, a map up to homotopy. Yes. yes. Okay. So why don't you need to require, when, why don't you just say whenever all three pairs are basic, if you require the basic, only basic pairs, then you get No, no, no. I, I'm saying uh, if I have u, if you have u inside your prime, suppose this, and we have an open set V, such that if you have, if you just drop, superimpose on this an open set V, that it not necessarily will be like this. But if they are like this, yeah. Okay. So, so now ha having. Uh, Uh, 
However, such a clean description, we can with more so, so sort of more ease define categor categorical analogs of such data. So the next part will be called showbers on surfaces. So first of all, let me discuss the analog of the nerve of, of the Picard groupoid. So and this is uh, the, the, this is a categorical construction and as the, uh, known as the Waldhausen construction. Waldhausen S construction. It actually appeared in uh, K-theory uh, a long time ago. It's a re relative Waldhausen S construction. So we start with an exact functor B to C of uh, pre-triangulated DG categories. Or, or just DG functor, sorry, DG functor of pre triangulated categories. Or we can do it as in the other formalism. So we have a new DG category called SM of F. So let me write how it appears. It appears as a fiber product, SN of B, S. N of C would be S N plus 1 of C. It would be a, a fiber product, which is the same in this case as homotopy fiber product. So S N of B is by the, so, so the simplest way to say is a category of, repre uh, category of representations of A N quiver in B. Of representations. Something like this, B1, Bn. Or it can be also viewed as a version of exact triangles. For instance, for n equals, uh, for n equals 2, will we have B1, B2. But we also can think of this uh, as, uh, as an exact triangle. So any, anyway, this is this category. This is the induced map. And this is the same category with label n plus 1. And this map del takes, uh, let me say, c0 to cn, make this diagram into the diagram of quotients, which really should be understood as cones. I'll write c1 over c0, cn over c0. And those are really cones, not quotients, just for simplicity of notation. So what's important about this category? So first of all, they form a simplicial object. So the, the simplicial object. And uh, th th there is complete uh, Analog, analogy with the f formula psi to the n plus phi in the sense that this category Sn of f has a semi-orthogonal decomposition. It has n copies of b at semi which means that have categories, several copies of categories isomorphic to B. It's, it's kind of clear out of this presentation for the ion quiver and one copy of category equivalent to C, they home in one direction, but not in the other direction. And everything is generated by, out of those copies by forming the cones. So on the level of Grotendieck groups, we get this. So now, similarly to the, uh, the theorem about 
about paracyclic vector spaces, we have a result that if the functor is spherical, so theorem is if, if f is spherical, then s dot of f, a priori it is a simplicial object, uh, becomes paracyclic. Uh, if I formulate it properly, yes, and I'm, I'm about to say s s s s s some particular case here. So this is sort of, as I said, indicates rotational symmetry with respect to two-dimensional geometry. So let me just... Let me consider this simple example. Suppose n equals to 1. Then S1 of f it, it has semi-orthogonal uh, decomposition made out of B and C. It's simply. So this is actually a canonical a particular case of the canonical way of gluing semi-orthogonal decompositions. If we have two categories, B and C, and the functor from one to another, we can produce a new one in which there is a B and there is a C, and somehow the natural pairing between them is given by the, in one direction, is given by this functor. So if we have the semi-orthogonal decomposition, uh, presuming that the functor has a joints, then we can form, so C is B orthogonal. Mm -hmm. We can form uh, a B double orthogonal, which is C orthogonal. So in such case, there will be an, a, a canonical equivalence from B to B double orthogonal, known as the mutation. We can continue and form uh, C double orthogonal. It was B triple orthogonal. So it, it looks, begins to look a little crazy if we start doing those orthogonals. But there is, a, where was to say it? Y yes, there is a theorem of uh, Harper and Leinster And Schiffman, so Schiffman, sorry, that if the functor is spherical, or its factor is if and only if it is spherical, then the fourth orthogonal will be equal to b. So f spherical, so orthogonals be are fourth periodic. It is a, it's some sort of, if you look into this, it is, not, it is not hard to prove this, but it's a remarkable statement. So, and if there's a fourth periodic, there is a mutation from here to here, and there will be a mutation from here to here, and the composition would be self-equivalence, which will be exactly what happens in the context of a spherical functor. So, already in this case, we have this situation. So, now we can get a definition of a perverse Schober. Uh, how much time do I have? Till 50? Yeah. Ah, okay. So I still have 12 minutes. Oh, yeah, oh I have still have 12 minutes. Okay. Thank you. So a perverse shopper. Something is wrong here. Let's see. A bigger. Oh, yeah, I can get a bigger one. A perverse shopper. on Xn, which is the categorical analog of a perverse sheaf, is a contravariant functor. I call S from the run poset of Xn to DG categories. Or one can do the stable infinity categories. Uh, satisfying. So first, homotopy invariance. <coughs> S 
second. The analog of exactness is for at categorical level is the concept of Riekelmann or SMR orthogonal decomposition, if you like. Uh, exactness. So exactness one was exactly right there. So for let me say admissible as before, admissible u inside u prime and v, uh, we have three categories, sigma of u, v united u prime, s of u, u prime. So it's, it's uh, uh, sorry, sorry, intersection, yes, yes, here intersection, and uh, uh, no, actually, I think it is united. It should be, should be united in both here and here. And I, th I, th I think it's like this. Yes, yes. If I'm correct, yeah. So basically, it's the condition in which you you, you can write the exact sequence of, of triple. So there is somehow n n no way to. Yeah, so v is a subset of u. V is a subset of u. Yeah. So an, an example uh, w w w would be this. Sorry. So suppose this is V, this is U, this is U prime, this is U prime, uh, this is U prime, this is U prime. Uh, yeah, this. Yes, I think it's okay. Yeah, I think it's okay like this. Yeah, anyway, so it, it will be, uh, it, it will correspond to s sigma of V. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah. If you take union of v, union of v, I don't know. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Maybe it should touch yes, you probably should touch, touch bound. Yeah. Anyway, so there is only one way of doing this, uh, j j just to, 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 to write the yes, the sh should touch bound or something like that. Yes. Uh, the, to, to, to write the, uh, the long exact sequence of triple v uh, intersected u prime. So, and this would be would be a recolman of semi orthogonal decomposition. So, that will be this category we embedded here, it will be projected here, and then some other map naturally will embed it back. This is property number two, uh, and it's, it's almost everything, but there is one more property which we need to impose, which does not follow uh, in categorical case. Which is uh, um, um, f the meyer vitoris uh, Property, uh, property three number gluing. Gluing, so when we have, we, when if u is equal to u1 united with u2, so and if, and uh, ui, ui intersected with v, and u12, which is the intersection, u12 intersected with v, are basic. Therefore, we have th then we have the pairing. Th then we have the right sigma of u, u prime. We have sigma u one, u one intersected u prime. Sigma of u two, u two intersected u prime. Sigma of u one two, u one two intersected u prime. This would be a homotopy pullback. So this uh, actually is a version of uh, two C is a can be seen as the next higher version of the Siegel condition. It's like two, we can call it the two Siegel condition. The, the typical situation would be when we have 
something like this. So we'll do something like this. And just sort of maybe represent this as a union of two things. So this one and this one. And this sort of corresponds to a polygon subdivided in the dual language picture, corresponds to a polygon subdivided into two sub polygons. So then it's a, this is the definition, such lo it's a local data that can be glued. And for a disk, it, co uh, it uh, coincides with the concept of a spherical functor. So it's a flexible local definition. So a functor, when you say contraval factor to the G categories, you mean in a non <laughs> sense, in the sense that are you the composition doesn't go exactly the Well, there are so several ways of handling this. We, we can sort of extend this or in the, or so, so, so like something over the Grotendieck construction. So, so if you write it properly, then it, it, there are several of levels of doing this. Or we work in the model category. When we do it on the nose, but sort of assume that such things can be done on the nose as needed, and then sort of proceed to homotopy data. So probably the most, uh, again, uh, the, the way the m most free from various reproaches like this is to do, is to work with stable infinity categories, but it will be just more difficult to uh, give a talk about this. It will be. Okay, so now I, I close to finishing. Let me just discuss the last part. It's called topological Foucault category. Category with coefficients in the Schoenberg. So, and again, the picture, which is the approach, which is more natural, is simply to extend. So, we have some data on pairs of open sets, which have the meaning of sections or cohomology with, of the pair. So once we know it for the basic pairs, we can simply extend this uh, by universal categorical construction to more general pairs by uh, Kahn extensions, by the pr procedure of Kahn extension, ren of x n, just embedded in simply set of pairs in x. So pairs of all, all open set v and v prime. We can So, 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 so let's say, let's call it Kahn extension, <coughs> which means that we say S of more general pair V, V prime, this will be homotopy limit over the category run of X n over, over category S of U, U prime. So it's like we, we define uh, homology with coefficients on a sheaf, which is a priori defined only on small open sets. So what's important here that the, the system of this uh, basic pairs, they don't form a Grotendieck topology. However, it may be useful to compare somehow. So if you think of what is the uh, analogy Between f meaning for this run category, so we can say that run of x n, so it's kind of similar to uh, what was st uh, what appeared in the study of vanishing cycles with higher dimensional base, some kind of vanishing site, is somewhat similar to the vanishing site uh, of uh, Delin, Lamont, and Orgogoza. For, van for, for uh, vanishing for so this theory is about vanishing cycles with higher dimensional base. We have some y to x 
And but this is not necessarily one dimensional. It consists of certain pairs. So and here is somewhat similar so, so for the identity x from x to x. So it, it, it's kind of similar, and the construction is more or less like version of vanishing cycles. It's relative cohomology in such a setting when there is only one relative cohomology. So one can th th think of this as being an analogous, although it's not, it's not of, of course, completely the same. So now I'm almost finished. Uh, okay, let me erase this. And, uh, so uh, let now assume that if x uh, has, uh, let's call it the corner structure, which means that the on the boundary we also introduce some set of corners. will be something like this. Uh, then, then we define the Foucault category of x, x in the sense with the structure in, in co with coefficient and s, s, s of x u prime, when u prime is a small neighborhood of actual boundary. small neighborhood of dx minus corners. So and this localizes on, uh, so this is kind of an a priori definition, but this localizes on a spanning graph, on any spanning graph. So if you have a, a, a graph which sort of legs terminate in the corners, it would be something like this. Th then this kind of automatically defines a covering of this, of this nature, of the nature that I erased here, to which I intersections are of this kind. And we get a representation of, uh, in this case, it would be, uh, Spines graph, let me call the graph K, uh, will be uh, sort of R gamma or homotopy limit of K with certain sheaf of uh, DG categories R K of S. And this is the, fo this is the shape in which uh, Maxim proposed to localize the Foucault category as we would now say with constant coefficients uh, f f for a surface. No, and, and finally, maybe uh, I, I would say as, as an example of this construction, uh, let me say it here. example, the, the Foucault-Zeidel category category of a holomorphic Morse function say W from some ma complex manifold of M to the disk and we think of disks with one corner so one corner So there will be critical values inside the disk, and such a data defines a Schober, and we call it the left Schober. called LW on the disk. So in the Foucault category, Zeidel category is the same as the Foucault category of this disk with this structure with coefficient in LW. So it shows that the concept of perverse sheaves is such a uh, universal, all, uh, all permeating concept, and probably there are more, uh, th there should be still f f further d developments in understanding the very basics of this concept. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
We have time for a few quick questions. And please uh, wait one second the time I reach you in order that your uh, question is... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah the um, question, do you have any idea what to do in high dimension, like you have uh, C2 and the point? Well, we don't have a clear idea, but we sort of think that working with pairs is the right way to, is the right way to approach it. Yeah, so, so appropriate, appropriate category of pairs from some more theoretic reasons or from micro-local reasons. So, so what's, the, what's sort of uh, special about this thing? If you write something like this, it's almost if, if we write something like this, and something like this has the vanishing cycle with respect to function sum z to the n plus 1 of f. So vanishing cycle with respect to cycle with respect to any function, not necessarily a function with non-vanishing differential, still preserve perversity. So if you sort of uh, idea that we sh sh should look, uh, how should we call it? Possibly let's call them Milner pairs. Something, something which mimics the Milner fibers for uh, functions with, say, isolated singularities. Yeah. No, no, I mean, it's kind of not general idea, but final answer. What should be category of this curve? Should be category? No, we don't have an answer. No, that, that we don't have. Yeah. There is a simpler question about the curve, not just the curve. Okay. It's can you say something about uh, the construction of the Slavshit Schrober? Well, yes. So it has. So locally, we have. A, it's kind of implicit in all what has been discussed in the, in the category in the literature. So near a, a, a singular point, we have a spherical factor. Outside of those points, we have a local system. So the question is gluing them. So it's, once we have a local. But I mean, but it's not a perverse shift. Right? I mean, what? It's not perverse, right? I mean, what do you mean? Uh, oh, oh, oh okay, okay, it is perverse, yeah. So, 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 so let me say it like this. If we have a holomorphic, so, so proper holomorphic, so, so maybe say proper, proper, proper holomorphic Morse function, then we can take the direct image of the constant sheaf. It's a complex. We can take it, there is a one perverse homology of this complex, which is a perverse sheaf. So our left with Schrober is categorification of this. So you think it's any perverse homology or something? No, no, the, the, this one, which is the most interesting, the middle one. The, yeah, the, of course, the one of which the, the sort of the... So outside of the singularity, it will be a local system. What local system? Well, the middle homology of the fiber. Now, so near, near a singularity, that will be a flip side data. What is the, what is the phi there? It's the vanishing cycle, the most classical vanishing cycle of Lefschetz. Do you have something to say about mixed perverse sheaves from this RAN point of view? Mixed, you mean with uh, uh, Hodge structures imposed? That oh, has been sort of been discussed like with various people, but we don't have an, any clear idea. So one idea that was sort of aired was that uh, uh, one can look for analog of uh, the Hodge filtration to the, to stability conditions, but. I, again, it, is, it, it, it has never been uh, f formalized, but it's something uh, c kind of, if you have a b sort of system of categories, and if you have uh, an abrasion stability condition, look, data look a little bit like a Hodge filtration. But it, it, that's, that's where this idea is. We don't have anything more. Any other question or remark? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank Misha again.